Greetings, welcome to the Transforming Assessment webinar series. This is our September session. Our presenter today is Shamim Jorda. He's from Macquarie University in Australia, and he's going to be talking about the Iron Insights uh, Analytics and Personalization uh, Messaging System. And to introduce um, Shamim, we've got uh, Jeff Crisp here today. Uh, Jeff, would you like to do your short introduction, please? Uh, yeah, look, thanks very much, Matthew. And it's my great pleasure, actually, to introduce uh, Shamim. Uh, Shim, Matthew and I uh, actually started out together on, uh, we actually started the Transforming Assessment um, project and the website, uh, so it's actually a great pleasure for me to uh, introduce Shamim. So Shamim uh, is obviously from uh, Macquarie University, you can see that in the uh, details you've got there, um, and uh, Shamim is actually quite well known uh, for the work that he's been doing uh, that he'll be talking about today, which is the iLearn Insights. Uh, that's also an award-winning uh, piece of work that Jamim has done. He won the Innovation Award uh, for iLearn Insights at the 2019 Ascolite uh, Conference, which was held in Singapore. Uh, Shamim has been at Macquarie for around six years uh, now, and uh, before that, he was at the AIFA, uh, which uh, is the financial analyst group. And before that, he was the learning project officer, as I said, at the University of Adelaide, where he worked with Matthew and myself on transforming assessment. Uh, so Shamim is gonna tell us all about uh, this uh, Island Insights, which is for monitoring student engagement and enabling personalized messages. So I shall hand back to Shamim now. Thanks. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me quite well. Um, my, my name is Shamim, Shamim Juwardar, and I work for uh, Macquarie University. And uh, thanks, Jeff, especially for telling so many good things about me. Um, uh, ne nearly 10 years back that you recruited me. Uh, hopefully, you, got, you found some potential in me, in me and recruited me at that time. And it went, uh, since then, it uh, really went good for my career. All right, so I will be talking today about the Island Insight, which I have been working for nearly many years, but for the last two, three years, it really uh, came to other people's attention. It really, uh, people started to use at Macquarie University. So Island Insight is actually, um, from my side, is not just an application. Uh, it's actually much more than that. So there are lots of things I have learned while growth going through the process uh, of developing iLearn Insight and rolling out to Macquarie University. Also, I have uh, gained a lot of uh, different types of experience. So uh, while going through the slides, it's not only I will show the application, I will also try to talk about some of my experience uh, that I have uh, got during the last two, three years. Uh, you all don't have to agree to those experience, but from my side, I will just, I'll try to share. So Island Insights, um, I'll be talking about monitoring student engagement and also how to enable uh, personalized message, how easily we can send personalized message, messages. And um, eventually, this is the main thing behind the student engagement. So I'll try to put some observations and some data to show how, how it really worked. So before I begin my actual presentation, uh, I need to acknowledge a few people. So definitely, uh, I'm the person who started, who, whose concept and design and implementation of Island Insight it is, but there are other people who are very much involved in it, and without their help, I couldn't have done it, definitely. One of them is Amanda Parker. She was the person, first person to, um, initiated that it would be rolled out into Macquarie University. That was a big jump or big big key step for Island Insights. Jeremy Hinn, uh, he put a lot of effort to uh, Island Insights and a lot of contribution he has. He's monitoring the chat. So uh, if you want to ask something about uh, Island Insights while I'm presenting, feel free to put it in the chat and he will try his best to uh, reply and he knows very well I learn inside. I'm sure he will be able to reply most of the questions that you have. Michael Mendoza, who looks after the back end of the Island Insights, which is also a key person. 
Dominic, uh, since uh, she joined uh, Macquarie University, she is the Pro Vice Chancellor Academic. She, since she joined uh, Macquarie University, she helped uh, I Learn Insights a lot. So it's very, very nice. Thank you, Dominic. Terence, um, every step that I took for I Learn Insight, he helped me. So thank you, Terence. And Fidel, uh, any graphic design, uh, design related help that I need for uh, I Learn Insights. Uh, he was always there to help me. So thank everyone over here who contributed to Island Insight, and that's why Island Insight is currently what it is. Now, let let me start with the aim of the project. So, aim of the project of Island Insight actually changed. What it was probably five years back, it changed to um, something else after probably two years back, and the reason is. Uh, the more I started to work on I Learn Inside, I started to understand how, uh, how I should implement it, what should be inside I Learn, and how I should roll it to the Macquarie University, right? So it's, it's about experience and expertise. So the more experience I have gathered, the aim also basically started to change, but in a good way. So basically, the, to develop an application. These are the three main aims, current aim of Island Insight to develop an application that meets obviously Macquarie University's current learning analytic and reporting requirements. Definitely it should be. But the second part is very important without changing any existing process. So whatever existing process an academic is uh, using, I never wanted that they should change their process to inherit Island Insights. Instead, they, I want, always wanted they should keep their existing process and Island Insight will do something so they can, uh, it, this application can accommodate that process. Second is, that is unique and driven by Macquarie staff. So over here, unique means basically uh, when I started to work on the Island Insight, honestly, I totally stopped looking at other commercial, uh, um, other commercial uh, learning analytic softwares and other uh, what other people are doing. The main reason is not that I don't believe other people are doing good thing, but if I look at the other people's work, my brain always will tend to go for those things and try to inherit those things into Island Insight, which I totally didn't want to. And uh, that's why like it is basically driven by the Macquarie stuff again, Whatever requirements that Macquarie staff needs, that's what I follow. I basically generalize their idea and put it into implementation. And the third one is that reduces workload and automate repetitive work for Macquarie, Macquarie staff. This is a very important one. In Macquarie University, as I was and still a support staff, I know what are the problems academics and other staffs are facing. What are the things they are repeatedly doing every day? So I thought I, I learn insight should be one of the application wh what, where I can decrease, decrease their repetitive work down. So all the, the things they are doing it every day, it, to some extent, if I can automate it, it would be helpful for them. And this one, the third one was very successful. And I have, till now, I'm pretty sure I have already done it for 25 to 30 staffs and they are really using it and it is very helpful and that way I developed all these things I generalized it as I have told you so other staffs can also take benefit out of it so these are the three main aims current aims of the island uh, insights now what's the outcome of this now okay so lesson learned uh, I would like to mention over here that minimize changing of any existing process was the key to success. So as I never tried to build something on my own and tell academic and support staff that this is what is available and you use it versus I said what you need and I developed it over here. This was a very success approach from my side and include MQ staff for, uh, as part of this application. I tried my best to ask them what they need the, I uh, tried my best to um, answer their questions and give suggestion, give advice uh, in a timely manner. So which basically makes them feel I'm also trying my best. 
so lots of it's nearly more than 100 requests and advice and new uh, ideas i got it from the academics and support staff so far um, which is a huge uh, diverse range of like ideas uh, and if i can implement all of this you can imagine how good i learn insert would be in probably a few years of time so this is my lesson learned uh, now this is the outcome of the project so if you call the outcome of the project or the success of the project the only thing i believe the success of the project is the acceptance from macquarie staff uh, people accepted it i'm very happy people are using it i'm very happy if you look at some of the data i put up so unique units uh, which has been used if you look at the current uh, session to 2020 it reached to 900 plus in session one was 850 plus uh, how many users are you using it session one 600 uh, users has used it in session two till now 417 till week five 417 uh, users has used it how many personalized email has been said if you look at over here 135,000 emails has been said through session uh, session one and in session two in only five weeks it reached to 76,000 so it will go beyond 135 i believe so as you can see this this is the kind of uh, acceptance that uh, i was after and i'm thank you thankful to all the bakery staffs who are currently using it and really um, hopefully they are getting something good out of it now this is how it looks when a uh, when a, a, a user logs into i learn insight so this is the uh, dashboard it's I, I i have written it dashboard but i don't like to call it dashboard it's more, more than uh, to, at least to me it's uh, more than dashboard to me um, so they can see um, what their their uh, unit title is and their short name is and they can uh, say like okay i want to uh, generate the report from this date to this date over here you can see uh, selected dates uh, on the right hand corner which week we are in in which session it gives a little bit idea and on the cork over here as you can see uh, this gives a uh, idea of the unit engagement so uh, this is one of the key thing once they logs in they can see how student how students are engaged with the unit as you can see for this unit is 94 percent students are engaged and how this is calculated is calculated by default taking into account how many students log, logged in within last seven days and how many students submitted their assessment on time so these are the two things by default is used to uh, calculate this engagement now if you look at be, be, behind over here there are settings details and calculations so what uh, let me explain then i will show you the slide so what settings uh, does is like if somebody do not like the default way of engagement that's why they can basically fine tune their engagement they can say like okay for me i have three assessments in my unit but none of the three assessments is basically contribute to the unit engagement uh, so so he can say he can say that like okay uh, make it zero uh, percent for the uh, for the assessments so that will be automatically taken out from the uh, from the unit engagement and if uh, someone believes that none of these things actually contributes to the unit engagement there might be some face to face class or some other way of engagement i learn inside is not that smart smart to to take into account all those factors they can completely switch it off that's not a problem so it's all about uh, uh, it's all about uh, uh, the container how he wants to configure the unit engagement. Now, if you look at the details and calculations, okay, let me show you the next slide. So this is how it looks, the unit engagement settings. This is how it is. So login activity, you can put how much weight do you want or on time submission, how much do you want and grade book uh, conditional score, how much do you want? And it will calculate uh, the unit engagement for you and a little bit of this can be divided into which particular assignments if you feel more important you can put more weightening to that or any assignments if you feel not important just put zero percent to that so this is how it is calculated and very much flexible and unit con con container has fully um, uh, can configure it it's, it's full within their control second one is calculation so 
uh, when I build this or develop this, the first thing I did, whatever way I calculate unit engagement, not 100% people will agree to that. But from my side, I need to give a nice way to show how the calculation is done. So they don't have to come me and say, Shamim, how the calculation is done. It's very clear. They will go there and they will see, okay, login within last seven days is 97% students logged in, uh, which is weighted as 100%, which becomes contribution factor is this. I am taking 50% of this contribution factor is in blue, 48%, this one. Same as over here from the grade book, on time submission, these are the uh, assignments which are due date has already passed and on time submission they can quickly see okay 90 percent and 80 89 percent and 88 percent and what is the weightening given uh, at that point of time and this is probably these are given because there are like 10 assignments in that but three of them is already due date has, due date has passed that's why i need to consider only three of them not all 10 so that's why i converted nine into this one so only for three so it becomes this much percent this much percent and this much percent which as you can see contribution factor is this i am taking again 50 percent of all contribution factor and which is 44.8 percent now if you look at the, the bottom i'm just adding this blue and blue over here this two which is becoming 93.52 percent and rounded to 94 percent so it's very clear way I try to express it, explain, uh, pass it to everyone. This is how it is done. And so far, no one has complained about it, uh, except one or two there is, but like uh, majority of the uh, people hasn't complained about it. So let's consider it's going on well. The third one is unit engagement details. Unit engagement details is similar to unit engagement, only the difference is it calculates details for each and every student. As you can see, all the students on the left hand side, and it gives the login activity engagement, on time submission engagement, and total engagement. And the good thing, if you put your cursor on the total engagement over here, it also gives you some good good information of that is of that student. For an example, it's showing that have not logged in within last seven days. Uh, and on time submission, one out of three activities. So these are the very easy way and the quick way to understand how it uh, how the students are engaged, which student is not engaged, and if somebody wants to uh, f uh, look into a particular student, can fil use the filters at the top, and they can see it. So this is all about in unit engagement. Next, we have a course and activity access. Uh, this is nothing to express. As you can see, it gives a graphical interface of course and activity accessed by the students. Blue one is the course, and red one is activity. And on the right top corner, you can see, uh, and in the dashboard, it gives for uh, last 14 days worth of information, but you can also see one, two, three, and four months worth of information. The reason I put this one, two, three, three and four, uh, four months of, in, uh, of, in, of information over here is at the end of the session, uh, unit convener can go to uh, fourth month, fourth, go to fourth four month worth of information just to figure it out when which week or which time student engagement was more which time in student engagement was less then he's the person to decide why it was more and why it was less probably at that time there was some unique things he has put into the um, in, into the course and that's why you, uh, engagement has increased or when engagement is less probably there are some information gap or something that a student couldn't find to go or to do something in the unit. So, so it's totally up to the unit convener how they want to uh, see, uh, use all these informations. Now this two graph is very, uh, very popular in my sense and very, very, very good. So left one is the top five hits within the last seven days. So this one gives which are the resources and activities are clicked by the, um, uh, by the student uh, presently. As you can see, like the first, second, third, and fourth. So if this one helps academic to understand, uh, in this week, are students clicking the correct resources and activity or not? If they see their 
they are supposed to click or view something and they are actually viewing something else then basically there is a information gap and something needs to be changed in the course uh, uh, instructions so this is very popular and i, I think like it is used uh, quite quite uh, well uh, at macro university on the second hand uh, right hand side is the open activities uh, it shows all the activities in a chronological order and as you can see there are due dates associated with it and there is a column called uh, remind students to submit this is now uh, uh, non active uh, so as you can see once uh, this particular time due date will come less than 7 days this will be automatically active and unit convener can send reminder email directly from here and all the reminder emails over here i will show it to you later is only three clicks to send personalized reminder email i will come back to that later so as you can see from here it can send uh, the reminder email it can also see how many submission has been made so at as they can see everything now at the below if you look at the observation this is a signature functionality of island insights what i do uh, in many of the reports i put observation so what happens over here so when somebody sends an email through island insights i want to show them or i want to be very transparent about the effectiveness of the uh, personalized email sent so for an example over here this uh, academic has sent 442 reminder emails so far 29% students submitted assignments within 24 hours 51% students submitted assignment into 48 hours and 92% students submitted in total after receiving those reminder email so this is a good way uh, to understand when uh, the effectiveness of the reminder email um, and i will show you some more example uh, later uh, of these observations and this is a really good sometimes i also monitor when somebody else sends an email i also monitor and i really like to see all those num numbers are changing uh, are like in one hour two hour three hour or after one day this number gets changed it's it's uh, looks really nice next to uh, graph over here is uh, uh, login details nothing to explain it shows how many students are enrolled how many students are not logged in within last seven days and how many students are never logged in so this red and blue graph on the left hand side uh, is basically is 39 on the night uh, on the right hand side so a list of those 39 students you can see over here and when they have last logged in you can see also over here and as you can see this observation shows as well total email sent 144 99.31 students logged in within 24 hours and 99.31 uh, students logged in within last 40, 48 hours so again this observation gives a clear idea of the effectiveness of the email sent through island insights and just before i go to the next slide let me tell you at the end of the session i also analyze all the email sent sent through this and for this one students who have not logged into island the email sent over here on an average is around 40 uh, 94 to 96 percent success rate somehow student logs back in into island insights with the personalized email i will show you the format of the personalized email uh, later of, of my uh, presentation next one is uh, uh, academic integrity module completion so now this academic integrity module is basically in Macquarie University resides in a different course. Uh, so you need convener if they want to know which are the, uh, which are the students have uh, within his or her unit has completed the academic integrity completion uh, module is very difficult for them to view. So that's why I put them into their dashboard from the other course saying that, okay, in from your unit, there are like probably uh, 1000 students but eight hasn't completed it yet and you can remind them them sending through this reminder uh, email over here and as you can see i also give the observation as you can see over here total email sent is 872 and it shows like what percent of students completes the aim module with after getting the reminder email 
just to let you know that as you can see it didn't work for 48 hours and i had to put more into this one and i found the reason because like most of these students are new students so as soon as they get an email they don't action they think like probably i just enrolled into the course let's wait for a few days and i will do that kind of thing so that's why it takes a little bit more time to basically action uh, from the student point of view so these are again my observation now lesson learned so with all those emails when i looked into it as far as i think a targeted short email with a direct clickable link to the unit or the assessment or the resources is the key to increase student engagement so if the email is short and if you can put a direct clickable link into your email then there is more chance that students will click that uh, link and will go to the direct to the place where you want him to go rather than if you just tell them that you go log in and view this then they need to log in uh, to their course then they need to find that resource then they need to go to that resource it's a, a little bit two three step process which basically less effective than this one this is again my lesson learned uh, uh, from all the emails that has been sent through island insights now dashboard uh, this one student as at risk so this is a beta version i just put it for this session uh, i'm not sure what i'm going to do it with, with this one but uh, as far as i think it it has a potential it, 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 it we can get something good out of it but i am not sure what would be the good one so just let me explain what it is as you can see i put uh, two uh, graphs from two different units so what i'm trying to present uh, from the institution point of view uh, not from the basically not from unit point of view if you think from the institution point of view which group of students we should put more effort on for an example let's consider the right hand graph so as you can see six students which is in red uh, hasn't submitted four assignments right let's assume, assume, assume this unit has four assignments and they haven't submitted all four assignments so definitely they are in risk so their risk factor or the magnitude which i put is 100 definitely alternatively if you look at this 11 students who hasn't submitted two um, two uh, assignments so definitely uh, they are not as uh, risk as these six people but from the institution point of view i am trying to find which group of students we should put more effort is it the six student or is it this 11 student or is it 31 student at the top so uh, i'm not 100 percent sure which way this uh, graph uh, or the visualization will go and what decision we can make out of it but this is for sure i'm trying to find it out a magnitude and the severity of the student uh, magnitude simply shows uh, definitely they are in high risk or low risk but uh, severity means like whether that group how how much how much important to put effort to that particular group of students so um, again this is this is an ongoing thing that i need to consult with the uh, academics and whoever people is involved to come to a conclusion this is in a beta version and every it is available in every unit Now this is the forum discussions. Forum discussions. Forum discussion uh, shows uh, all the forums in one place, and I have grouped them into four different groups. The first blue one is the discussion. It shows how many unique students contributed to a discussion. Uh, the next one is unique user discussion. No, sorry. So the first one is how many discussion has been posted. Second one, red one is how many unique user contributed to that discussion third one yolo one how many reply has been uh, replied and the fourth one how many unique users have replied uh, to those reply so this is how i have grouped uh, four of them so this gives a clear idea of the forum engagement to the academic and on the right hand side this pie chart shows uh, how many forums has been posted within last 24 hours this is nothing new uh, if i go to the visualization part there is a, a little bit new uh, things over here as you can see if you go to a forum visualization this is what you can see 
so anything that is plus and in the middle that is the starting starting of that forum and if you put your cursor you can read those right over here now all those small small uh, uh, circle is basically reply to the inertial uh, post and you see somewhere reply to reply to the inertial post any bright red if you can see over here any bright red in color that means that is posted by the login user whoever has logged in these are posted by him so i was trying to figure it out how in how many discussion the login user has posted something so that is the bright red and if you look at the big icons over here that means these are the these are post within last 24 hours so this visualization gives a clear uh, student engagement in terms of foreign to to an academic or to a to a support staff who is supporting that particular unit this is activity schedule so what i did in the activity schedule in some of the units they have lots of activities right so i try to put them together in a timeline diagram and group them into four groups past activity current activity future activity and no date activity and the main reason behind this was to tell them if there are too many um, due dates falls into the same time so they can see like if suppose there are many due dates of the activity at the same time that might be a burden for the student so looking at this they probably they can start they can change the start or a due date time of a particular activity and probably uh, uh then and probably uh put it uh, across the session uh, rather than at one place so that was the main reason of this dashboard uh activity schedule i also have uh, compare past units so i was trying to find it out a way to benchmark uh, uh, any unit so this is how i have done it so they can compare uh, their current unit with the past unit uh, as you can see over here, they can compare the participants, whether it has increased or not, how many terminated assignment has been used in this case is same, how many late submission has been made. As you can see, there is a drop of uh, uh, late submissions over here, and there is an increase of no submissions over here. Uh, but this is like second half year unit, that's why it is like that. But this is again a starting point of what we should have in the unit com comparison. So I put all these things. Now I will get more idea and I will keep adding to this particular report and uh, it would be more, more useful. So this is the unit comparison. We also have a group report. This is a very good one, but we haven't, I, we haven't advertised it uh, very, very much now, but we are using it internally. We have started to use it internally and it's, it's really working well. With this report, we can generate any faculty, department, or program level reporting. Uh, and we tried with uh, 10,000 students. It really works. It shows uh, uh, all the key things uh, at, in, in one page. This is very good for the faculty uh, support staff or department support staff or program level support staff. This is really uh, working well. So this group uh, report has a lot, many functionalities, which I'm not going through now uh, because of the time consumption, but we have this, which has the capability to uh, group uh, unit or the courses and report it to the relevant people. Now let's go to the personalized email. As I have to, told you, every email in this iLearn Insights to send every email is easy. You compose, you preview, you send, no more than three clicks. Um, so for an example this one if you look at uh, this is how it looks compose email so if you want to send all the emails who have not logged in within last seven days you come over here if you are happy with the template you don't have to do anything if you are not happy with the template you just write whatever you want to write then you go to preview now preview if you look at it automatically converts to hyperlink to the unit over here and the second one is another variable which picks up the, all the, uh, all the um, most, uh, most uh, student, all the activity clicked by the most students. It's automatically, so these are also the dynamic students uh, which are clicking quiz, resources, forum, and resources, this and that. And also the support staff. 
So if I just go back to the previous slide, I don't think you can uh, read it over here. So I'm, I'm basically um, reading all this from most accessed activity list. So if this is in the compose email, it will automatically, dynamically and automatically pick up the most accessed activity and put it there with the link. If you put support services, as you can see, this one, it will automatically pull up all the support sub services and uh, make this support services link. So as you can see, with those variables, you can basically uh, write your own email and that way you want to, and it, it will be dynamic and it will be uh, different. So the main thing of, main um, good thing of iLearn Insight is the variable that we have introduced and how those are introduced. Let me come to the next ones to show you some of the variables. Over here, to add a variables, it's very easy. You, if you go to the variable checkbox, you can see all the variables, what you want to add. You just select from here, first name, last name, full name, unit title, this and that. So, and it will be automatically posted, pasted to the compose email. For an example, if you choose first name, it will come up as a DR demo. Last name, it will come as a last name or you can add full name. This is nothing special, it's very easy. Unit code automatically will pick up the unit code. Unit title will automatically pick up unit title with the link. Uh, unit guide will automatically pick up unit guide with the link. Most access activity list, that's, this is what I have just said, will automatically pick up everything is over here. Other students in your unit have been accessing the following material to help with their studies. And these are the links. This is very good way to encourage people to say that your uh, fellow students are uh, using this, uh, accessing these resources. So you come and log into your unit uh, and access it. Uh, and it is working. For us, it is working. This is support services. We'll pick up all these support services information. Uh, activity related variables, activity title will pick up activity title with the link uh, so they can go directly to the activity. So if this is a quiz, they will go directly to the quiz page and they will uh, access their quiz. Activity due date and time will be automatically picked up. Activity submissions and activity participants will automatically picked up if you want. This is very good if suppose like 80% of the students already submitted their activity, only 20% left so you add this particular uh, variable into your email so other 20 percent will uh, think like okay uh, most of the uh, students have submitted so we should go and submit it these are basically uh, a way to encourage the students to come back to the unit or uh, engage them themselves with the unit so these are uh, about the student mark so what i'm trying to uh, do over here when you send mark uh, it sends graphically to the students what is your mark, uh, what is uh, average mark, and what is highest, highest mark. This is a very good way to show to the student where they do they stand, right? Uh, do they stand below average or the above average? As you can see, below average is uh, red. Uh, it automatically goes as red and above average automatically goes as uh, green. But it don't say what's the meaning of red or green. It just it just I put the color um, into into it. So this is a good way to send um, students once the grade has been released, uh, so they know where do they belong to uh, in terms of uh, average students mark. Personalized email. Uh, uh, there are other uh, email things that you can send, like uh, how many times they have logged into uh, last seven days, how many submissions they have made, uh, out of how many submissions. So as you can see with the variable, there are many things that a unit convener can send to send their personalized email. There are ways to do it. Uh, this is the Zoom variable. And uh, this, this is particular like when we had to do everything online, I thought I should have a Zoom variable because everyone is using Zoom. And so as you can see, if, I, if you select the Zoom variable, the whole things get uh, copied into your compose email and you just need to change add uh, date and time and you need to change add your zoom link here if you do add this to then the whole things becomes like this so uh, it looks nice and like more form formatted uh, but believe me here is a um, i think i have got a lesson learned believe me this zoom variable no one has used so far because i think because this is looks so scary. 
Um, so this is what my lesson learned from here is the application needs to be as simple as possible. Whatever you think is better, is brilliant. If it is a complicated one, it's not going to get 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 used. So uh, we try. We need to try to keep our application as uh, simple as possible. Now I think uh, I'm close to end. Uh, these are the observations I've put up. As you as you know, like uh, I, I have started to put up all the observations for a unit from my side. Uh, I also, uh, at the end of the session, I also compile all the observation together for a station uh, institution-wide observation. So this, this observation was done after session one, 2020. As you can see, I told you re-engagement with the unit was always a successful one for me. Uh, 92 to 96% student logged back in within the unit within 48 hours, which is a big success. Activity su submission, it uh, came out to be around 71%. Uh, this is uh, not a much success, but uh, again, like I'm, I, I'm also getting uh, learning why it is not a success uh, and what we can do to improve it. For an example, for activity submission, I have noticed that some of the uh, academics has sent a reminder email after the due date, just to say that you didn't submit your assignment. Now, if the due date has passed and you send an email, definitely they won't be able to submit their assessment. So that's that's another thing that uh, I'm looking into how I can um, deal with this this sort of situation and uh, make probably activity submission better. But this session in session uh, two, 2020, many people are using this uh, to remind the student. Let's see how we how the observation looked at the end of the session session two. And this is the academic integrity module, as you can see. As I have told you, they don't basically uh, instantly log back. These are all new students. They don't log back and basically uh, finish the academic integrity module. They wait for one or two days to complete it. And that's why like it started with 34% then 45. End at 89 is not bad. So these are all the observations that I have. And I think that's all I have to say from my side. Uh, and before I just finish, let me show you one live demo of how uh, it looks um, in terms of sending email. So if I, hopefully this one, hello. Please let, uh, hopefully you are able to see my screen. Yes, we can see, thanks Shamim. Excellent. So let's go to one of the units. Suppose this is the unit. I hope I am logged in, still logged in. Okay, so this is the live unit. As you can see, I just quickly scroll just to show whatever slide I have shown is basically what everyone see over here, as you can see. Let's take this one as an example. Students who have not logged in to iLearn, if this uh, if this convener wants to send an email, email of student one click, and I have two part. In this case, they can select or deselect a student. There is another one. They don't have to do even anything. So that will be help. That is helpful for sending probably fifteen hundred students. So these are the students that I'm going to send an email to. Suppose I select all or I still deselect some, doesn't matter. I compose, second part. This is the compose. Suppose I'm not happy with first name. I delete my first name and put selected for evil full name, selected, and I preview. I'm happy with the other one. There it goes. So this is their first name and last name. I have noticed that blah, 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 as you can see all written over here. And I sent to seven state and this is my test environment. So I can send it, it won't go to the real student. So it's gone, all the seven student, I have sent this. Now this is my email. If I open this email, this is what student will be able to see. So let me open one of them just to show you. Dear, this student, I have noticed that you haven't logged in or access this and that. See, clicking this, it will directly to take them to that unit. 
clicking all these will directly take them to their quiz or the forum the researchers this is the very good one recently i have also put a uh, confirmation email send as you can see like this what it does it send a confirmation email to the unit convener he can also add uh, tutor or marker into it so they get the copy as well so they okay this is the email that has been sent today so this is how it easy it is to send a reminder email one more email i will show you before just i stop that is something to do with the graded so suppose i have graded uh, i have finished grading now i need to send the um, email to the students that i have finished grading so this is how it looks so as you can see all comes with a nice uh, average mark to grade book so unit convener quickly can see how many people is below average or the above average and it can be sorted as well so let me pick one uh, red one and let me pick one blue one so these are the two students i'm sending for the time being i can send it to all i don't have to only select two and suppose i'm happy with the whatever it's written over here i preview the message and see it's all graphical represented and i send message now so as soon as i send message it should go to the student let's wait for two seconds for the email to come and here it is first email as you can see um, with the link and they can see exactly um, below average as you can see for this student and there should be another one which is uh, above average yeah so with the green one so this is how easy it is uh, to send an email and i'm i'm pretty sure and confident to tell say that um, at in macquarie university they are i'm pretty sure they are very happy and they are using it happily which i'm happy as well so that ends my uh, session um, if any question uh, jeremy hasn't uh, answer you i can answer uh, feel free to let me know um, thank you very much Uh, Shamim, thank you very much for that. And um, so Jeremy's answered a lot of the questions, I think, uh, that were there. So um, are there any further questions that people have got? Uh, we'll continue to answer, and either Jeremy or um, Shamim can answer those. And also, if anyone wants to, I guess, we're uh, Matthew, we allow people to take the mic if they want to actually word their question. Oh, sorry, if they want to speak their question, sorry, rather than type it in. Sure, yes. Uh, you're welcome to put up your hand as there's a little hand symbol down the bottom center of the, of the screen. You can put up your hand if you want to use the mic. Uh, Shamim, I was just going to say, very impressive uh, piece of work there and actually uh, very useful for academics as well. And I like the fact that you said you actually tried to work out what would save academic time, uh, but at the same time giving meaningful um, you know, feedback and uh, 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 work for the students. It's got to work for students and it's got to work for the academic staff as well. So well done. Um, we'll just wait a sec and see if there's any further questions coming through. Um, do you know what portion of the staff are using the system now? 600 is a number, but portion I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how many staff. Quarry. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a 1300 units so it's around pretty close to half of the units so matthew and shrim i don't think there doesn't seem to be any more questions coming through and no one's put their hand up as far as i can see no Yeah. Okay. okay Matthew, do you think we should? Um, oh, you stop the recording now, or are you going to keep? Oh, that's right. I'll leave it for a bit. Um, okay. So just before we go, folks, um, next next uh, session, seventh of October, is uh, examiner judgment in competency based assessment. Um, if you could, uh, if you're interested in that topic, um, the it is focused on medical education, but I'm sure uh, it's quite applicable to other kinds of disciplines as well.
Thank you for coming along. I haven't seen any more questions yet. Uh, oh, the just, last thing I sorry, uh, Matthew, yep, go one, ahead, Jeff. One comment I was just going to make about what you just said there about even though it might be in one particular discipline, I think one of the advantages of these where is even though someone might be working in a particular discipline, um, the principles and the process that they've used are definitely applicable to other disciplines as well. So certainly encourage people to, uh, you know, tune in and come along, even if it's not your discipline, because that's often where you actually learn something new and something different, rather than the same as perhaps what you're, uh, what you're already aware of from your colleagues. Sorry, uh, we're silent. I'm, I'm no good at talking and typing at the same time. <laughs> I'm really bad at that. Um, if folks would like to fill in our um, session feedback survey, that would be great. No pressure <laughs> either way. So thanks, Shabim. I think we'll close it off. Um, Thank you have... very much. Th thanks, yep. Jeff, for joining. That's nice. Yeah, Shabim, I, I was very pleased that I was available here. Um, uh, Matthew, I see Bernie's uh, put a comment. You might just want to check that one as well. Yes, there, there is issues around um, daylight savings and the timing system. Um, this all runs on free and I don't have any money to fix the system. <laughs> um, sometimes the emails turn up one hour early, sometimes one hour late. I think I have to try and delete those emails somehow. Anyhow, <laughs> hopefully you've all made it. All right, um, I'm going to stop the recording. So thank you very much for coming.